We're now going to take a look at hardware which can be used for collecting in an information system. And we're going to try to align each of the different categories of hardware with the specific data type and the entry of that data type into the information system itself. So firstly is a keyboard and keyboards are input devices which are used for manually entering text-based data into an information system through the user typing it. So they press A on the keyboard, A appears on screen and is displayed to them through the monitor. Okay, and obviously we've got all our keys there. Now, we have all know what a traditional keyboard looks like, but there are also objects like keypads, uh, which can be stationed at things such as ATM machines, and then also digital keypads, which appear on your phone, which actually aren't physical at all. They're all software-based, which all do that same thing that allow users to enter civil-based data. Next, we have a mouse and pointing devices. And these are input devices which allow users to enter through pointing and clicking on objects that appear on the system's graphical user interface. It's a GUI. So when you're looking at your monitor, then you can see uh, windows open on your screen, okay, the operating system or Mac OS if you're using a Mac computer. When you click on icons, what it's actually doing is executing code within the software. The actual clicking of the specific area of that graphic execute and the way you click it, whether you double click it, whether you right click it, or if it's on a mobile mobile device, the way you touch it or hold your finger on it or multi-touch it, they all have different commands mapped to the coding based on the actual operating system and same for all types of software. Okay, um, so when referencing mobile uh, operating systems, we're talking more touch there. So we're not just talking about mouse, we're talking about things such as touch pads and touch screens, trackballs, okay, all these different things allow users to point and click. And although it is simple for us to do, there is actually a lot of code happening behind the scenes, okay, which is executed based on how the user clicks those things. Next, we have digital cameras, and these are input devices which capture image and video data from the real world. Once captured, the picture will be stored in the system as a bitmapped image, okay, or as a specific video uh, type, okay, which for then to be put into the information system, Okay, when it is connected to the actual system, whether that be through cable, now they've got Wi-Fi functionality as well, to bring that video image data over. For audio, we have a microphone, which is used to capture spoken audio data from humans. Microphones play an important role in digitizing audio to be stored on the system. Now, uh, microphones can be built into digital cameras, which allow them to capture audio data as well. But then we also have the traditional standalone microphone, which you see a lot of YouTubers using these days. And obviously, um, you know, musicians themselves use microphones to get the highest quality possible of their audio as they speak it or sing it to go into an information system. The final area we'll look at today are scanners, okay? Not just in the traditional sense of scanner, but the whole variety of scanners. So devices such as optical character recognition, OCR scanners, barcode readers, RFID readers, and NFC technology, which can read data from physical objects and essentially recognize the symbols based on those objects. So that might be that it actually, in the case of the barcode we can sample here, the way the black lines appear or reflect a specific number, okay? And then that's what actually goes into the information system when scanned. That then gets mapped against the database and it's able to recall a specific object. But essentially they can read text or symbols off an object. So we've got that for different purposes. So maybe to scan an item and find it within a database to recall its details. It may be to actually recognize text and then insert into a system so that it can be understood by word processing software. Okay, so there are a whole variety of scanners out there and they collect data from external objects in order to find records about that object within the information system. So I hope this has given you an introduction into a small area of input devices which can be used for collecting, okay, and essentially how they allow users to enter data into an information system as the kind of first step in getting the ball rolling when using an information system and going through its information processes.